Now, if you translated that to science as, and how can we question your ideas? And how can we get rid of them if needs be? And have you questioned your own ideas? Who do you work for? Who are you accountable to? Who's funding you? Why are they funding you? Why are you saying this? That would be a very healthy doctrine, I think, for anyone to question a scientist, wouldn't it? It would, although I'm going to change the question. I mean, in science, it's not who do you work for, it's what do you work for? Yeah, true. Okay, so are you working for your own personal advancement? Or are you working to establish reliable knowledge about the universe, truth? Well, I might and just question that, though. What about tobacco? Wouldn't you say that tobacco science in the past, in the 50s, was a little bit more about who they're working yeah. for than why? Uh, yeah, but the question is, was tobacco an extreme example? Um, Tobacco, the tobacco industry, and it's interesting, okay, so my second to last book, my last book was a case for keto, before that was a case against sugar. And I make the argue that, the, you know, that sugar is toxic and is, you know, maybe has killed actually more people than tobacco has. That's a relatively easy argument to make. Um, and then people say, so the sugar industry is just as bad as the tobacco industry. And I say, no, the tobacco industry, their job was to convince the world that the scientists were wrong. So they had to pay their own pet researchers, in which case mm. who you work for is crucial, to generate data that would conflict with conventional thinking. The sugar industry just had to convince the world that the nutrition researchers were right. right. And that what they said about everything else also applied to sugar. So a calorie is a calorie. You get fat only because you overeat. Dietary fat causes heart disease. So the researchers they were paying, and they did end up paying researchers, were paid to say what they believed was already true. So their conflict wasn't that they were being paid by the sugar industry and working for the sugar industry. The conflict was that they were bad scientists and didn't understand what they were and how to do good science. So pushing on an open door, really. I mean, it was because yeah. I was going to ask you this question about was it corruption or naivety in, in the 60s, but it sounds more like it was the established paradigm. And so it was not that hard to say, can you just confirm this for us rather than can you come up with well, propaganda? And that's what they had to do. And now I have yeah. discussions with my friends who think I'm naive because I think that cognitive dissonance is a much more powerful sort uh, force. You know, people grow up, all we talked about group think and all that, you grow up believing something, you assume it's true, you base your career on it, everything you've done is built on this fundamental assumption, the people you work with think it's true, the respect you get, the positions you get, they're all based on the fact that this one idea is true, and then somebody comes along and tells you it's not. And they're not even an insider, they're an outsider. And you're supposed to acknowledge that basically your professional career is a, is a sham and that fundam you made a mistake from the get-go. Yeah, yeah. And they're not even a qualified um, and quack. Nobody, and nobody can do that. <laughs> yeah, nobody can do that. I can't do That's when I say, you know, I'm not going to change my mind. Nobody can do it. I don't know that there maybe one in a million human beings are capable of saying, and I've heard from some of these people. These are my most favorite emails, you know, the academics who admit that, you know, I read your book, I tried eating a low carb, high fat diet, I think you're right. And it pains me no end. Yeah. David, what, what, David Unwin said, I, David Unwin is one of those people I made a mistake to begin with. Yeah. I'm going to have to admit that mistake to move on. Most, most of us can't do that.